Rayback, part of the Ream family of companies. As a reminder to all of our participants, the instruction provided in this training is intended for qualified and experienced professionals. If you are not qualified, please do not to attempt to apply these instructions on your own. This is another presentation of Raypack's Boiler Bite-Sized Bits. Welcome to a Boiler Bite-Sized Bit. In this presentation, you will learn how to set the Versa dip switches specifically for the High Delta family of boilers. The platform ignition module, commonly called the PIM, is inside the junction box behind the center panel. The dip switches are recessed in a little box on the front of the PIM. Like the Versa board, there are eight dip switches here also. We will discuss each of these on the next few slides. Dip switch number one gives the operator the option of defining the temperature differential or to allow the Versa program to determine the best differential temperature for the system. Auto differential is recommended here. The Versa program will optimize based upon system inputs to the best differential temperature to avoid short cycling. When it is necessary to run at very high temperatures that may threaten tripping the upper limit, you can use a manual differential temperature setting ranging from 2 degrees Fahrenheit to 42 degrees Fahrenheit, split evenly above and below the target. Dip switch number two only comes into play when PIM dip switch number five is on. If number five is off, then PIM dip switch number two does nothing. If PIM dip switch number two and number five are on, then the boiler will be looking for a volt DC signal from an external controller like an energy management system for direct drive function. With dip switch number two off and number five on, then the boiler will run to target temperature. This only applies to single boiler systems. Firing rate control from an external system will not work in Cascade. A temp tracker plus is an example of an outside driver that can be used here with dip switch number two on. PIM dip switch number three controls the post purge option. Post purge allows the pumps and cold water protection system, if equipped, to run for a bit after the burner shuts off. This extra 20 seconds of pump runtime gets the residual heat out of the combustion area so you do not trip on a high limit accidentally. The default time is just 20 seconds, but it can be adjusted from 20 seconds to 20 minutes. PIM dip switch number four is an example of some helpful Raypack engineering. With PIM dip switch number four on, the boiler will cycle the pumps and cold water protection, if present, after a period of 72 hours of inactivity. So say you are in shoulder weather, like spring or fall, and you get a week of warm weather, where the boiler does not need to fire. You don't want the pump to seize up from inactivity, so this system helps to prevent that. After 72 hours, the pumps will run for just 10 seconds, just enough to keep things working properly. During these 10 seconds, the display will show exercise. PIM dip switch number five needs to be on to engage dip switches number two and number six, as they all support energy management systems. When driving the boiler from an external controller, like an energy management system, also known as a building management system, then turn on dip switch number five. The EMS will connect up to ports 13 and 14 on the low voltage panel. If not driving from an EMS, leave dip switch number five off and the Versa system will drive the boiler. As just stated, dip switch number six only comes into play when dip switch number five is on. Here's where you select what kind of signal is needed, on, indicates a 4 to 20 milliamp signal, while off indicates a 0 to 10 volt DC signal. If not using an energy management system, leave dip switch number 6 on the PIM off. Dip switch number 7 is another example of some cool Raypack engineering. Turning on number 7 enables freeze protection for the boiler. It works like this. If the temperature drops below 45 degrees at either the inlet or the outlet sensor, then the boiler pump will fire for a bit, drawing some heat from other areas in the system. 
until the temperature is higher than 50 degrees at both sensors. If the temperature continues to drop and gets below 38 degrees at either sensor, then the boiler will fire for a few minutes until both sensors are over 42 degrees Fahrenheit. This process will override a soft lockout, but not a hard lockout, as that could be dangerous. Dip switch number eight controls the commission test. This is a handy tool for demonstrating that the high limit is working properly. With dip switch number eight on, the boiler will run to 20 degrees higher than the high limit to force a high limit shutdown. Once complete, power off the boiler, turn off dip switch number eight, then turn the boiler on and clear the fault. Here is a summary for PIM dip switches on high delta boilers. For a single boiler operating on the Versa system, as in not on a building management system, and plumbed properly with primary secondary plumbing, turn on dip switches 3, 4, and 7. Leave the others off. This will enable the post purge feature, allow for pump exercise, and enable freeze protection. Again, that's turn on 3, 4, and 7. And that wraps up yet another Boiler Bite Size Bit. Look for more Boiler Bite Size Bits from Raypack. Raypack. Engineered to perform. Built to last.